Alaska, Bering Sea. Ohio class nuclear submarine weapons discovery. disposal facility on Shadow Moses Island in Alaska's Fox Archipelago was attacked and captured by next generation special forces being led by members of Foxhound. They are demanding that the government turn over the remains of Big Boss, and they say that if their demands are not met within 24 hours, they'll launch a nuclear weapon. will have two mission objectives. First, you're to rescue DARPA Chief Donald Anderson and the President of Armstead, Kenneth Baker. Both are being held as hostages. Secondly, you're to investigate whether or not the terrorists have the ability to make a nuclear strike and stop them if they do. What's the insertion method? We'll approach the disposal facility by sub. And then? We'll launch a one-man SDV. SDV gets as close as it can. Dispose of it. From there on, you'll have to swim. High-tech Special Forces Unit Foxhound. Your former unit. And one that I was the commander of. So they're still around. There are six members of Foxhound involved in this terrorist activity. Psycho Mantis with his powerful psychic abilities. Sniper Wolf, the beautiful and deadly sharpshooter. Decoy Octopus, Master of Disguise. Falcon Raven, Giant and Shaman. And Revolver Ocelot, Specialist in Interrogation and a formidable gunfighter. And finally, in charge of them, Foxhound Squad Leader, Liquid Snake. Liquid Snake? weapons disposal facility covers the whole island. I'll instruct you by codec after you reach your target. Anyone going with me? As always, this is a one-man sneaking mission. Weapons and equipment OSP. Yes. This is a top-secret black op. Don't expect any official support. Hi everyone, this is Autopostrophe, and uh, we're going to take a look at uh, Metal Gear Solid, The Twin Snakes. Uh, this was a version created specifically for the GameCube, based off the PlayStation 1 original. Silicon Knights worked with Hideo Kojima on uh, creating this new version. At the time, Metal Gear Solid 2 was... Uh, also out and released on the PlayStation 2. So while this is a uh, remixing of the first game, uh, there are some elements of the second game that were added onto uh, this version as well. Uh, but we're actually not going to use any of those elements from the second game. One of the complaints I hear about this version is that uh, using the elements from the second version, uh, mainly the first person view, makes the game too easy. 
Uh, but as you notice, the first person view switch is actually a button. It's a button that you can ignore completely throughout the entire game. You never have to use it. In fact, it's even put it on the button that is <laughs> not very easy to use in the first place. Uh, the Z button on the GameCube controller. So, we're going to eliminate that, that bit of confusion and uh, just not use that button. During the battle with uh, Revolver Ocelot, uh, it can make the game uh, much, much easier since you can see exactly where he is at all times. Whereas in classic mode, it's a top-down view and uh, he is off-screen uh, much for much of the battle. Uh, and this is one of those games where uh, they expect you to adjust the values on your TV and not in-game. Uh. Alright, we're just going to leave that a default. I have my TV, you know, uh, perfectly calibrated. Alright, I think everything else we have is needed. Uh, let's take a look at the briefing before we start. It's been a long time, Snake. I should have known you were behind this, Colonel. <laughs> Snake, straight to the point as always. What do you want from me? I just invited you here so we could have a talk. Invited? That's what you call sending armed soldiers after me? Sorry if they were a little rough with you. But we've got a serious situation here. Only you can get us out of it. I'm retired from Foxhound. You're not my commander anymore, and I don't have to take orders from you or anyone else. You will take these orders. I know it. Excuse me. Who's this? Dr. Naomi Hunter, the unit's chief medic, an expert in gene therapy. Are you military? No, civilian. I've been sent here from ATGC. Pleasure to meet you, Snake. Don't worry, this injection won't hurt a bit. Mm. What's the shot for? What's wrong? You don't like shots? Snake, listen up. About five hours ago, an island in Alaska's Fox Archipelago called Shadow Moses Island was occupied by special ops soldiers. What soldiers? Next generation special forces, led by members of Unit Foxhound. They've presented Washington with a single demand, and they say that if it isn't met, they'll launch a nuclear weapon. A nuclear weapon? I'm afraid so. You see, the island is the site of a secret nuclear weapons disposal facility. Foxhound hijacking a nuclear weapon? Now you understand how serious the situation is. You have two objectives. First, infiltrate the nuclear weapons disposal facility and rescue the two hostages. They are DARPA Chief Donald Anderson and Kenneth Baker, president of ArmsTech. Those are some heavy-duty hostages. Secondly, you're to investigate whether or not the terrorists have the ability to launch a nuclear strike and stop them if they do. Any questions, Snake? Questions? I haven't even said whether I'd accept this mission. Well, you can make up your mind after you hear more about the situation. One of the other notable changes was the uh, fact that all the voice actors from the original game uh, had participated, but all the voice acting was completely redone. So none of the original voice acting was used in the creation of this game. Uh, there are a couple reasons for it, uh, mainly the fidelity of the original voice acting uh, didn't sound very good through the GameCube. 
So in order for it to uh, get the proper sound, uh, the voices all had to be redone. That being said, some of the voices uh, and some of the voice actors had decided to uh, change the way they had uh, spoken their lines. The most notable is uh, Mei Ling and uh, Sniper Wolf, who uh, no longer feature the uh, racist uh, uh, accents uh, when they were speaking their lines. That's right, I said they're racist accents because, well, strangely enough, they are. <laughs> Mei Ling is, especially, is an especially uh, obvious choice since uh, her accent didn't really make any sense for her character since uh, she was uh, basically a English-born uh, citizen. So uh, having her with a uh, racist accent uh, really didn't make any sense. Uh, for Sniper Wolf, uh, unfortunately, the accent that uh, was given to her uh, doesn't quite sound like uh, someone who has English as a second language and uh, Russian as a first. There are a number of uh, mistakes that were made, so thankfully, that is cooler has prevailed, and the uh, voice actors all use their native English instead. Let's take a look at the second file here. Tell me about the nuclear weapon disposal facility. The disposal facility includes a hardened underground base. Even with our most advanced intelligence gathering equipment, we can't tell what's happening inside. So... Someone needs to penetrate, gather intelligence, and report back. Sounds like a spy movie. What's the insertion method? Well, an air insertion is impossible. Mm, not with this storm going on. We'll approach the disposal facility by sub. Approach? Yes, within a few miles of it. The facility is equipped with sonar detection capabilities. They'd be able to hear our engine or propeller noise. And then? We'll launch a one-man SDV. Launch? Same as a torpedo. Only this has no propulsion device of its own. After the SDV gets as close as it can, dispose of it. From there on, you'll have to swim. You want me to swim in sub-zero Alaskan water? Don't worry. That suit represents the latest advances in polythermal technology. The nuclear weapons disposal facility covers the whole island. I'll instruct you by codec after you reach your target. Anyone going with me? As always, this is a one-man sneaking mission. Weapons and equipment OSP. Yes. This is a top secret black op. Don't expect any official support. Of course, the uh, graphics have been uh, cleaned up quite a bit, and uh, all the models were redone. Uh, Dolby, Sur Dolby uh, surround support was also added, uh, or Prologic surround support was also added, I should say, along with the ability to uh, use progressive scan. What's the time limit? 24 hours. They say they'll launch after 24 hours. Do they say what the target will be? So far, they haven't mentioned the target. When did the countdown start? Five hours ago.
Who are you speaking for? Naturally, I'm representing the U.S. government. So who's in supervisory control of this operation? The President of the United States. So, there's a lot of crap hitting fans in the White House basement. No. At this point, they're still video conferencing with each other. If that's a real nuclear warhead, shouldn't they issue a COG? Not yet. The Secretary of Defense has operational control and is fully aware of the situation. After you infiltrate, if you determine they possess nuclear launch capabilities, a COG will be issued. Well, if they haven't relocated to the nuclear shelter under Mount Washington, I suppose there isn't that much reason to worry. Yet. Is the National Security Agency in on this? Yes, and so is the DIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency. The DIA? I'm starting to get a bad feeling about this. They'll be sending us some support. We don't need desk jockeys. We need a nuclear weapons specialist. Of course. A nuclear weapons specialist has already been assigned to us. Backup from a specialist. I'm just an amateur when it comes to nuclear weapons. I know. That's why I've requested the assistance of a military analyst named Nastasha Romanenko. She'll be providing you backup by codec. A female analyst? She's built up an impressive record as an advisor for the nuclear emergency search team. Contact her if you have any questions. She's also an expert on high-tech weapons. Where is she working from? Her home in Los Angeles. California? California's a lot different than this place. You're retired. Why are you involved in this? Because there aren't many people who know Foxhound as well as I do. Is that the only reason? I've been soldiering for a long time. I don't know anything else. I guess even though I'm getting a little old, I still love to be in the field. Colonel, you're a lousy liar. Tell me the real reason. Okay, Snake. Sorry. I'll be frank. A person very dear to me is being held hostage. Who is it? My niece, Meryl. What was your niece doing there? Several soldiers were reported missing the day of the revolt, and my niece was one of those called in as an emergency replacement. She looks like you. She's my little brother's girl. He died in the Gulf War, and since then I've been watching after her. A personal motive, Colonel. That's not very soldierly. I'm retired. I'm just an old man now. And I'm your friend. Since when are we friends? I've thought of us as friends since the fall of Zanzibar land. Haven't you had enough of a moody bastard like me? No. That's the part of you I trust. Please, Snake. Save my niece, Meryl.
All right. But I have two conditions. Name them. One. No more secrets between us. I want complete disclosure at all times. And two, I'll only accept orders directly from you, Colonel. No cutoffs involved, okay? Agreed. That's why I was called. But one thing. What? I'm not a Colonel anymore. Just a retired old war horse. I understand, Colonel. That doctor, is she part of this operation too? She was in charge of Foxhound's gene therapy. She knows more about those men than anyone else. So, she's used to seeing men naked. Make no mistake, I'm not a nurse, I'm a scientist. By the way, what was that injection for? It's a combination of nanomachines and an anti-freezing peptide so that your blood and other bodily fluids don't freeze, even at subarctic temperatures. Nano machines. Not just one kind, either. There are different types which will replenish the supply of adrenaline, nutrition, and sugar in your bloodstream. Now I don't have to worry about food. I also put some nootropics in there. Say what? Nootropics. A class of drugs which will help improve your mental functioning. It'll make me smarter, huh? Anything else? Yes. It's a type of stimulant. It'll keep you alert and responsive for 12 straight hours. That was quite a cocktail. Anything else in there? Those nanomachines will also keep your codex batteries charged up. I guess I can call you when I'm ready to go on a diet. You're welcome. chief of DARPA, and the president of an arms manufacturing company. What business did they have at a nuclear weapons disposal facility? The truth is that secret exercises were being conducted at the time the terrorist group attacked. Must be extremely important exercises if those two were directly involved. Were they testing some kind of new advanced weapon? I'm not privy to that information. Do we know exactly where they're being held? The DARPA chief has also been injected with a mini transmitter. As you get closer, you should be able to pick up his location on your radar. to launch a nuclear missile. They say they do. They even gave us the serial number of the warhead they plan to use. Was the number confirmed? I'm afraid so. At the very least, they've got their hands on a real nuclear warhead. Isn't there some kind of safety device to prevent this type of terrorism? Yes. Every missile and warhead in our arsenal is equipped with a PAL, which uses a discrete detonation code. PAL? Permissive Action Link. The safety control system built into all nuclear weapon systems. But even so, we can't rest easy. Why not? Because the DARPA chief knows the detonation code. But even if they have a nuclear warhead, it must have been removed from its missile. 
All the missiles on these disposal sites are supposed to be dismantled. It's not that easy to get your hands on an ICBM. That used to be true. But since the end of the Cold War, you can get anything if you can pay the money. How well armed are these terrorists? I know there was an exercise going on at the time they revolted. They're heavily armed, I'm afraid. What about their battle experience? The six in charge are plenty tough. After all, they're foxhound people. Hey, you're gonna make me blush. The others are next generation special forces. They're not your average grunts either. So what exactly are they demanding? A person's remains. Remains? That's right. To be more accurate, cell specimens which contain the individual's genetic information. Cell specimens? Why would they want that? The terrorists need them. You see, these next generation special forces have been strengthened through gene therapy. Genes? Strengthened? You've heard of the Human Genome Project. They've been mapping the human genome and they're nearly finished. Following up on this research, the military has been working towards identifying those genes which are responsible for making effective soldiers. There are genes that do that? Yes, and using gene therapy, they're able to transplant those genes into regular soldiers. Gene therapy. I'll explain this part. With gene therapy, it becomes easy to remove genes that cause sickness and disease, or, alternatively, to splice in additional genetic material. In other words, we can overcome all sorts of genetic diseases and at the same time add genetic characteristics as desired. Okay, and so if you knew what genes were responsible for making the perfect soldier, you could implant them in the same way, right? Yes, we could. But it all depends on being able to isolate and identify those soldier genes. And in order to do that, it's helpful if you can study the genetic information of one of the greatest soldiers ever. One of the greatest soldiers ever. The man they called the greatest warrior of the 20th century. You don't mean Big Boss. That's right. We've been working feverishly to identify the genes responsible for his incredible combat skill. So far, we've discovered about 60 of the so-called soldier genes. So his body was recovered after all. Yes, and his cells have remained frozen in a cryo chamber. His genetic information is a priceless treasure to mankind. Priceless to the military, perhaps. His body was burned severely, but it was possible to restore his DNA profile from just a single strand of his hair. Oh, heck, it's like some kind of dinosaur theme park. And you're gonna put these genes into soldiers? Yes. We'll use a process that I discovered called gene targeting. The strongest soldiers don't become what they are by acquiring their skills through training or experience. We now know that hereditary factors are far more crucial for creating superior soldiers. Snake, we can't hand over his body. It's more strategically important than any weapon of mass destruction. I hear the terrorists are calling themselves the Sons of Big Boss.
the son's a big boss. Tell me about these next generation special forces. They started out as an anti-terrorist special ops unit made up of former members of biochem units, technical escort units, and the nuclear emergency search team. Their purpose was to respond to threats involving next generation weapons of mass destruction, including NBC weapons. Until they were added, that is. Who's they? These guys didn't start out as regular army. Looks like a pretty international group. Mercenaries? Yeah, and it gets worse. Most of them were from a Merc agency that I think you're familiar with. They were part of Big Boss's private guard. And after Big Boss went down, the military just bought out all their contracts. Outer heaven. After that, they were merged with our own VR unit, Force 21, and retrained. If you ask me, these so-called next generation special forces should be called simulated soldiers. They have no real battle experience. Soldiers of the video game generation, huh? Don't forget they've all been strengthened with gene therapy. They carry genes which make them excellent soldiers. Don't get careless just because they don't have much experience. I thought international law banned the military use of genetic therapy. Yes, but those are just declarations, not actual treaties. The interesting thing is that nearly every member of the unit conspired in this attack. How can an entire unit be subverted to rebellion? They're calling it a revolution. Since they all went through the same gene therapy, they probably felt closer than brothers. They see the unit as their only family. The sons of Big Boss. But if they were regular army, they must have been interviewed periodically by army counselors. According to their files, they all got straight A's on their psychological tests. They all seemed like fine, upstanding, patriotic soldiers. But they all took part in the uprising? No. Several people didn't show up on the day of the exercise. That's why there was a resupply of troops. Was there any sign recently that something might be wrong? There was a report a month ago that they were acting strangely. Apparently they consulted classified information about the soldier genes and perform their own gene therapy experiments. They can do that, even without you? Well, our gene therapy process is almost completely automated. And besides that, they're all geniuses with IQs over 180. Even the existence of this genome army is a national secret of the highest order. We had been hoping to investigate this thing quietly and deal with it behind closed doors. High-Tech Special Forces Unit Foxhound, your former unit, and one that I was the commander of. An elite group combining firepower and expertise. They're every bit as good as when I was commanding them. So they're still around. There are six members of Foxhound involved in this terrorist activity. Psycho Mantis, with his powerful psychic abilities. Sniper Wolf, the beautiful and deadly sharpshooter. Decoy Octopus, master of disguise. Vulcan Raven, giant and shaman. And Revolver Ocelot, 
specialist in interrogation and a formidable gunfighter. Oh, sounds like a bunch of cartoon characters. And finally, in charge of them, Foxhound squad leader, Liquid Snake. Liquid Snake? Yes. And you're the only person who can stand against him. Another notable difference in uh, this version and the original version is that the cinemas are directed by uh... ah gosh I forgot his name uh, I'll remember when we get to him uh, but the uh, same uh, same director of Bayonetta so they're a bit more stylized than they were in the original ah Camilla sorry. <laughs> Liquid Snake. Liquid Snake. The man who shares your code name. The solid versus the liquid. Tell me what you know. He fought in the Gulf War as a teenager, the youngest person in the SAS. His job was to track down and destroy mobile Scud missile launching platforms. You were there too, I believe. Didn't you infiltrate Western Iraq with a platoon of Green Berets? I was just a kid myself back then. The details are classified, but it seems that originally, he penetrated the Middle East as a sleeper for the SIS. He was a spy for the British Secret Intelligence Service? But he never once showed his face in Century House. He was taken prisoner in Iraq, and after that there was no trace of him for several years. After you retired, he was rescued and became a member of Foxhound. I thought that by the time I left, they were no longer using code names. I don't know his real name. That information is so highly classified that even I can't look at it. Here's a photo of him. <sighs> Pretty shocking, huh? His skin tone is different. But otherwise, you two are exact duplicates. I have a twin? I don't know the details, but it seems so. That's why we really need you for this mission. You're the only one who can beat him. Now that I've met you, I know. You've got something that he doesn't. Why don't I find that thought more comforting? Uh, the original game cinemas were done with uh, animated 2D GIFs. And uh, in this game, uh, just like uh, Metal Gear Solid 2, uh, they have instead used 3D models. So uh, again, there are some additions from Metal Gear Solid 2 I need to borrow your scissors. What are you going to do? Don't worry. Just gonna clean myself up a little. Huh? I don't want to be mistaken for the leader of the terrorists. Uh, so all of that was even before we... <laughs> <laughs> have a chance to play. Uh, we'll play on very easy uh, since we want to make this uh, a fairly quick let's play. And uh, it can take quite a while if we play at the uh, extreme level. So uh, let's just see if we can get right through it.
stay alert. He'll be through here. I know it. I'm going to swap down a couple of bothersome flies. This is Snake. Colonel, can you hear me? Loud and clear. What's the situation, Snake? Looks like the elevator in the back is the only way up. Just as I expected. You'll have to take the elevator to the surface, but make sure nobody sees you. If you need to, contact me by codec. The frequency is 140.85. When you want to use the codec, push the pause button and then the A button. When we need to contact you, the codec will beep. When you hear that noise, press the pause button and then the A button to receive the call. The codec's receiver directly stimulates the small bones of your ear. No one but you will be able to hear it. Got it. Okay, I'm ready to go. Sorry, that's not a credit. Kinemura. Huh. Sometimes I get the two confused since they uh, have similar roles. And uh, personally, I really like Kitamura's uh, cinemas. I think they're quite a bit better and more exciting than the original.
snake. I'm in front of the disposal facility. Excellent snake. Age hasn't slowed you down one bit. How's that sneaking suit working out? I'm nice and dry, but it's a little hard to move. Bear with it. It's designed to prevent hypothermia. This is Alaska, you know. Take it easy. I'm grateful. If it weren't for your suit and your shot, I would have turned into a popsicle out there. An anti-freezing peptide snake. All of the genome soldiers in this exercise are using it. I see. I'm relieved to hear that. Already tested, huh? By the way, how's the diversionary operation going? Two F-16s just took off from Galena and are headed your way. The terrorist radar should have already picked them up. A Hein D. Colonel, what's a Russian gunship doing here? I have no idea, but it looks like our little diversion got their attention. chance to slip in unnoticed. There are only 18 hours left until their deadline. You've got to hurry. Wow, he must be crazy to fly hind in this kind of weather. Who's that? Oh, sorry. I haven't introduced you two yet. This is Mei Ling. She was assigned to us as our visual and data processing specialist. She designed your codec, as well as your Soliton radar system. Contact her if you have any questions about either of them. <laughs> nice to meet you, Snake. It's an honor to speak to a living legend like yourself. What's wrong? Nothing. I just didn't expect a world-class designer of military technology to be so... cute. <laughs> You're just flattering me. No, I'm serious. Well, I know I won't be bored for the next 18 hours. What's this? I'm being hit on by the famous Solid Snake? But I'm surprised. I... I didn't think you'd be so frank. Looks like we both have a lot to learn about each other. It does, doesn't it? Well, let's get to know each other better. But first, let me explain about your Soliton radar system. The bright dot in the middle is you, Snake. The red dots are your enemies, and the blue cone shape represents their field of vision. Be careful, Snake. The genome soldiers have highly developed senses of hearing and vision due to their gene therapy. Make sure you don't let them see you. First, I want you to infiltrate the disposal site and look for the DARPA chief. The DARPA chief was injected with the same GPS transmitting nanomachines as you. He should appear on your radar as a green dot. Get whatever information you can from him about the terrorists. If he's alive, that is. Snake, your radar isn't affected by the weather, but if you're discovered by an enemy, you won't be able to use it. Yes, it gets jammed easily, I'm afraid. Yes, it's all made from currently existing technology. You won't be able to use it in an area with strong harmonic resonance, so be careful. We'll be monitoring your movements by radar, so contact us by codec anytime you want. Got it. I'll call if I'm feeling lonely. Seriously, Snake. We're here to back you up, so call if you need some information or advice. I'm also in charge of your mission data. Contact me if you want me to save your current status. My frequency is 140.96. It's a dedicated frequency for saving data. Don't forget it. Remember, except for your binoculars, you need to arm yourself with whatever weapons you can find. I remember. First, I'm strip-searched by Dr. Naomi here, and then all my weapons are taken away. Imagine yourself put in that position. Well, if you make it back in one piece, maybe I'll let you do a strip-search on me. Mm, I'll hold you to that, Doctor. By the way, sorry to disappoint you, but I did manage to smuggle out my smokes. How did you do that? In my stomach. Thanks to the shot you gave me that suppressed my stomach acids. Cigarettes? How are those going to help you? You never know.
If you want to get in, there's the front door. It's the fastest way, but there's too much risk of being spotted by the enemy. Yeah, I can't just knock on the door and ask them to let me in. What about the air duct near the door? Mm, one sentry on the left, and one on the right. They're armed with 5.56ers five and pineapples. There should also be a duct on the second floor. I can't see it from here. I'll let you decide the best COA. I'm counting on you, Snake. Alright, uh, well, you'll have to see my sneaking prowess here, uh, which is not very good. Ah, you know. <laughs> I am not going to be able to perfectly sneak into this facility. It's been forever since I played this game. Snake, this is McDonald Miller. It's been a long time. Master, what are you doing here? I quit being a boot camp instructor, so I moved out here for some peace and quiet. I'm in retirement, just like you. Once in a while, I still help train the Alaskan scouts. Passing on the skills to a new generation, huh? Campbell told me about the situation here. I thought I might be of some use. There's no one I'd rather have in a foxhole than you. Well, I know lots about survival in a harsh environment. I've lived in Alaska longer than you. So call me if you have any questions about the flora or fauna out here. My frequency is 141.80. Uh, it's nice to be able to play this without the uh, warping textures <laughs> of the original. And also quite a quite a bit more comfortable. To the cell in the first floor basement. What about the vent shaft cleaning? Oh, they just opened the vent covers. They're about to start spraying for rats. First floor basement ventilation shaft. Shut those covers as soon as they're done spraying. Also, keep your eye on that woman in the cell. Don't get careless now. Woman in the cell? Did something happen? There's an intruder. <clears throat> really? He's already done three people. He's killed three people? Yeah, and they say he's using stealth, too. Stealth? There's an intruder besides me? Anyway, I want you to increase the security detail on the chief. Uh, I personally never liked the uh, PlayStation, the original PlayStation controller design. Uh, so again, it's nice to play it with a nice, comfortable controller. Uh, though I do like the PlayStation 4 controller, since they finally decided to break away from that uh, PlayStation 1 era controller design.
Press the action button to drop down. Ah, strangely enough, you don't have to. <laughs> but you should. So let's do it. the elevator to change floors there should be a cargo elevator that you can take down somewhere around there try to find it there <laughs> All right, I don't know. I'm screwing around. <laughs> Snake. Okay, okay, okay. I'll do it for I'll do it for realsies, I swear. Use the elevator to change floors. There should be a cargo elevator that you can take down somewhere around there. Try to find it.
Oh, really? Huh. I forgot that I could see you. Alright, what do you got for me, buddy? Pardon me. It's picking up the DARPA chief. He's the green dot. Hurry and rescue him. Ah, uh ah, -huh. let me heal myself. Don't get all excited. I don't know. Looks like it was that time of the month for me, huh? Yeah. That's the way it works sometimes. You want to go up or down a ladder just press the action button by the ladder approach the ladder and press the action button to climb it <laughs> so uh obviously the instructions were made for people who uh were maybe not necessarily familiar with a lot of games um, so it'll go out of its way to tell you how to do stuff Which is just well and good, since uh, there's a lot of things you can do. There's a lot of actions and a uh, certain amount of buttons you have to keep track of. Damn cold. I hate Alaska. Boy, oh boy. That woman is built all right.
Ah, uh, yes, the game of tunnels. <laughs> uh, probably on the original PlayStation, this is probably the only thing that really actually ran at a consistent frame rate. This game really pushed the uh, PlayStation 1's hardware quite a bit. A woman? Not him. Let's see here. Uh, go back. Uh, do I have to go all the way out? I can't remember. Uh, I think I do, maybe. Let's see. Okay, so now she's uh, in her skivvies, so. <laughs> Still doing the same exercises, though, uh, which I guess is, uh, that's normal, right? Because I would do that when I'm at home. Although, if you can imagine, like, a hippopotamus doing the same thing, uh, that's a little bit closer to what I would look like. Chief Donald Anderson, right? You're here to save me, huh? What's your outfit? I'm the pawn they sent in here to save your worthless butt. Really? It's true. You don't look like one of them. In that case, hurry up and get me out of here. Slow down. Don't worry. First, I want some information about the terrorists. The terrorists? Do they really have the ability to launch a nuke? What are you talking about? The terrorists are threatening the White House. They say if they don't accede to their demands, they'll launch a nuclear weapon. Is it possible? It's possible. They could launch a nuke. Well, back to our regular clothes. I thought this place was just for the keeping of dismantled warheads. They shouldn't have access to a missile. That's the official story. Got it. 
We were conducting exercises with a new type of experimental weapon. A truly historical weapon. What? A weapon with the ability to launch a nuclear attack from any place on the face of the Earth. A nuclear-equipped walking battle tank. Metal Gear. It can't be. You knew? Metal Gear is one of the most secret black projects. How did you know that? We've had a couple of run-ins in the past. So that's the reason you were here at this disposal site? Why else would I come to a godforsaken place like this? I had heard that the Metal Gear project was scrapped. On the contrary, it's grown into a huge joint project between arms tech and ourselves. We were going to use this exercise as raw data, and then proceed to mass production. If it hadn't been for the revolution... Revolution? Rex has fallen into the hands of terrorists. Rex? Metal Gear Rex, the code name for the new Metal Gear prototype. They've probably already finished arming the warhead they plan to use with Rex. These guys are pros. They're all experienced in handling and equipping nuclear weapons. Hey! Shut up in there, will ya? I thought that all nuclear warheads were equipped with safety measures. Some kind of detonation code that you have to input. Oh, you mean PAL. Yes, of course. There is a PAL. It's set up so that you need to input two different passwords in order to launch the device. There are two passwords? Yes. Baker knows one, and I know one. Baker? The president of Arms Tech? That's right. Each of us needs to input our password or there can be no launch. But... <laughs> they found out my password. You talked? Psychomantis can read people's minds. You can't resist. Psychomantis? One of the members of Foxhound. He has psychic powers. This is bad. It's just a matter of time before they get Baker's too. If they find out Baker's password... Yes. They'll be able to launch a nuke any time. But there is a way to stop the launch. What? The card keys. Card keys? They were designed by Arms Tech the system developers, as an emergency override. Even without the passwords, you can just insert the card keys and engage the safety lock. And if I do that? Yes. You can stop the launch. That card key... So where are the card keys? Baker should have them. Listen. You need three card keys. There are three different slots to put them in. You need to insert a card into each one of them. Okay, three card keys. Do you know where they might be keeping Baker? Somewhere in the second floor basement. Second floor basement? I heard the guards say they moved him into an area that has a lot of electronic jamming. Any other clues? Yes. They cemented over the entrances, but didn't have enough time to paint them. Why don't you look for the areas where the walls are a different color? Here, take this. It's my ID card. It'll open any level one security door. It's called a PAN card. It works together with your body's own electrical field. Personal area network, huh? 
It transmits data using the salts in your body as a transmission medium. As you approach the door's security devices, they'll read the data stored in the card. And the doors will open automatically. Gotcha. Okay, I'm gonna get you out of here. Wait a minute. What is it? You haven't heard any other way to disarm the pal, have you? From your bosses or anyone? No. Are you sure you haven't heard anything? I just said no. So, does the White House plan to give in to the terrorist demands? That's their problem. It has nothing to do with my orders. But what about the Pentagon? Pentagon? Thai food did smell funny. Should have ordered. Eh, probably should have used more caution. Huh. Dead. Naomi, the chief, what happened? I, uh, I don't know. It looked like a heart attack, but... A heart attack? No! Colonel, are you hiding something from me? Absolutely not, Snake. You've got to understand. This counter-terrorist op is security level red. You'll need the highest security clearance to learn the real story. You want me to believe that you're in charge of this op, but you don't have complete access to the file? I told you, the Secretary of Defense is in operational control. I'm just here as your support. Snake, we don't have time to debate. Get out of there and find President Baker. Move. So you killed the chief, you bastard! Liquid? No, you're not. Don't move! Is this the first time you ever pointed a gun at a person? Your hands are shaking. <sighs> Careful. I'm no rookie. Liar. Your eyes wander. There's no confidence in them. The eyes of a rookie. You've never shot a person, have you? You talk too much. You haven't even taken the safety off, rookie. I told you I'm no rookie! You're not one of them, are you? Open that door. You've got a card, don't you? Why? 
so we can get the hell out Looks of here. Like be a little delayed. Uh. What are you doing? Don't think. Shoot. Who knew shooting people made them drop food? That's great. I'll have to remember that next time. Thanks for the help. Wait! Who are you? Get that detonation code. Boss, I have a good idea. Naomi, I just had some kind of hallucination. Is it from the nanomachines? No, Snake. The nanomachines are functioning properly. So what was it? It must have been psychometric interference coming from Psychomantis, Foxhound Psychic. Think of it as a mental feedback loop. So, that was Mantis. You called Snake? Let's see. Uh... 
Snake, remember what de Gaulle said. The graveyards are full of indispensable men. Snake, you're all alone and surrounded by bad guys. Try to be careful and avoid getting into a fight whenever you can. You're right. Wow. You know all sorts of great quotes, don't you? <laughs> well, both my parents are from Guangdong, China, but I was born and raised in America. I've always liked reading literature from both sides. Kind of keeps me in touch. I'll share some more quotes with you if you like. I'm looking forward to it. But to tell you the truth, I'd like to learn more about you. Well, I'll think about it. Uh, actually, why don't we stop there? <laughs> this is Autopause Free. Uh, you have been watching uh, Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes. Uh, this version is the uh, GameCube version, of course. Uh, unfortunately, this version has uh, stayed on the GameCube. It hasn't been reissued on any sort of digital format. Uh, so if you want to play it, then you will have to track down either a Wii that is GameCube compatible or an original GameCube. It's not a rare game, so uh, it shouldn't be too hard to find. And uh, it shouldn't cost too much. Yeah, it's not really a collector's item. Uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching. I will see you here very soon at the next stream.